Hey guys, Devin Lynn, board certified dermatologist. You'd like to know more about the Hollywood peel and what it does and how it can help pigmentation and improve your skin texture and tone. So just as a background, Hollywood peel itself is a misnomer. Uh, it's a made up term and certainly it's made up by marketing itself. Do I use it? Have I used it in the past? Yes. Do I think it's useful? I think the effects are marginal. I think most of the effects are from the laser itself and less with the carbon. So what is a Hollywood peel? Hollywood peel basically is to use carbon, which is um, a black substance, and that carbon powder or liquid is placed upon your face. Now what that does is that it gives you a chromophore, in other words, a target to hit, and we use a particular laser. And the laser that we use is known as a nanosecond laser or Q-switch laser. And this, in theory, treats the particles, which is the target, which is your carbon, in turn causing a reaction. It looks quite spectacular because when you place the carbon peel on, your face is basically black. And magically, with the laser, once you treat it, it clears out the pigment itself. This is why it's a little bit of marketing, guys, because when you actually put the black substance on the carbon and you clear it with the laser, it looks spectacular. So patients actually think that the impurities, um, the dirt, the grime, the carbon, the buildup of sebum gets cleared up by the laser itself. But no, that's not the case. So how it actually works is that in theory, the carbon gets absorbed into your pilosebaceous units, in other words, your um, oil glands. And as a, as a result, once it's deep in your oil glands, the laser wavelength itself hits the pigment within the um, oil gland itself and causes a reaction. That reaction might be to partially damage your oil gland to reduce oil production, decrease the amount of C. acnes, which is bacteria implicated in acne, and also clear up your skin um, overall. Now, does it work? The answer is that in some studies, it can show that it does work marginally. The problem being is that the absorption time for the carbon to actually go into your pilosebaceous unit, and this has been shown through many studies, does take several hours. So just putting it on your face and leaving it there for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or even one hour does minimal, and it's more marketing per se. It does not mean, however, the laser doesn't work. The laser actually is really good, and this is where it gives the effects. Now, in the context of pigment, the Q-switch laser or the nanosecond laser uses a big spot size between six to eight mils. And what it does is that it can suppress pigment if it's low fluence, in other words, low energy. And it works through something called subcellular selective photothermolysis. In other words, instead of blowing up pigment per se, using the low power of this laser, it decreases the activity or the function of your melanocyte. In other words, the pigment producing cell. So the pigment producing cell has arms called dendritic processes. So what this laser does is that it decreases the size and the transfer of these dendritic arms. In other words, the pigment transfer itself in the synthesis of pigment melanogenesis is decreased. So your whole melanocyte, your pigment producing cell, the activity is decreased using low fluence laser. Now in the scheme of things that can work and it works well. The side effects are minimal. There's no downtime. Um, however, in our practice at the Melisma Clinic, we tend, even though we have several of these lasers, we tend to use these less because the Pico lasers give a much better response and they are safer, but also far more effective. Guys, I hope you like that honest opinion on the carbon laser peel.